Hi everyone, uh, my name is Victor and I will be presenting problem number four, Origami Launcher, for Team Koninga Riket Sverige and Chalmers University. So the problem description reads, Color paper structures such as the Miura Oregon and Canberra program to exhibit a wide range of plastic properties depending on the decrease in the tech quality. Design and build an origami can to vertical launch uh, stand up ping pong board using only a single anchor sheet of uh, board paper. How is the height of the board in relation to related to the foam paper optimize your design to achieve the maximum height possible? So this is our interpretation of the problem. Design and build a ping pong board launcher, find pattern dependence on the performance, and optimize accordingly towards maximum achievable height. Here below we can see our launch sequence where we use this paper spring as our origami launcher. Uh, okay, so what we, I will go into is, first we will look at both methods, then go into the elastic energy in paper, and then the design of our launcher, and then into optimization of this launcher, and finally the <coughs> conclusion. Okay, so first, we model our ball with a uh, point mat model, and with these initial conditions, we're E ball here, it's the initial kinetic energy of the ball. Uh, we have the force of gravity and the drag force. For the drag force, we look at the Reynolds number, we can see here it's in this vicinity, which gives this expression for drag force. And this coefficient CV is about 0.5. Okay. So we formulate Newton's second law. We get this differential equation with these initial conditions. We solve this, and on the way up it looks like this, and on the way down like this. It's horrible, but it looks like this. We have here the blue one, this is our drag model. The red one would have been if we neglected drag. And then we have these rings, it's the measured height of a ping pong ball over time. Okay. So we can relate this maximum height here, analytically. So we relate the maximum height to the initial kinetic energy ball with this expression. And now, in this launch sequence, we can see that the velocity of the spring is half the velocity of the ball, initially. So we go into the kinetic energy of these two, and we found the uh, energy partition between the initial kinetic energy of the ball and the energy from the spring, U. Okay, so if we assume a uh, homogeneous hydropic ideal elastic plastic uh, and previously only formed paper, we get this expression for the band energy in the paper. E is the youngest model is. I is the second moment of the area and depends on the cross section of the paper. Kappa is the curvature of the paper, where kappa C here, it's the critical curvature in the paper. So we want to maximize this U in our design. Okay, so quick re recap. We looked at Newton's second law and found the equations of motion of the ball. We uh, related the maximum height and kinetic energy and found uh, this expression. And we looked at the elastic launch and found the energy partition between the initial kinetic energy E ball and the energy from the spring U. And so we went into the beam theory then and looked at the spring potential energy. Okay, now for our design. So we have an A4 paper. And we have limited ourselves to faults in two primary, uh, primary and secondary directions. So in the first, the primary direction, we have a length of each flap. We have a number of flaps. That's L1 and L1 respectively. And we have how we make this fault. Uh, and then we have uh, the secondary direction. We have similarly a length of each flap L2, a number of flaps M2, and we have how we make the secondary fault. This is six parameters. It's the primary and secondary fault style. It's the number of faults in the primary and secondary direction. It's the length of the faults in the primary and secondary direction. <coughs> Okay, so we measured our launches with filming the launch and then using frame by frame manual position marking MATLAB to establish the maximum height. Um, we noticed that the height is exponentially distributed beneath some maximum height H max, and this makes it so we can use, uh, the, we can find the 95% confident intervals of our measurements. Okay, so now we start to vary the parameters. We have, for the second fold, we can either have a sharp fault or a smooth fault. Uh, and to make these smooth faults, we had to use cogs to make them in a consistent manner, as it was hard otherwise. Uh, so now, when we vary a parameter, we try to keep as many as possible constant. Now we have only varied the secondary fault. And these are the results. We can see our rings are a measurement, and the red triangle is the maximum height measured, and then we have the error bar is 95% confidence in fault. So we can see here clearly the smooth fold is much better than the sharp fold. Uh, but why? Well, we go into ideal elastic plastic theory again, and we look at, we integrate the energy density and take account of the yield cutoff because of the critical curvature. And we can see we get a much greater energy for the smooth fold. Okay, so we keep the secondary fold smooth as the optimum parameter there. Okay, 
However, we read from the problem description about Miura or Ergen as an example. Uh, so, what is that? Well, it looks like that. However, it's flat fault. That means it's a sharp fault, and then it's terrible for storing energy. Uh, so we will only we will have the smooth faults and not the Miura. Okay. okay. So the primary faults that we have zigzag dragons power pattern, which we have considered. Uh, we keep the rest of the parameters constant, and we can see the green one is an optimal parameter, which we have established. Uh, okay, here we have the results. We can see the spiral pattern. It's a bit lacking. And why is that? Well, it was easily plasticized, we observed, when we tried to put them through the cogs, uh, and therefore it was uh, not preferable. So now, the other two, zigzag or dragon, well, they are somewhat similar. I will go into the dragon pattern a bit. Well, we observed it was asymmetric, which made the launches uh, very problematic, uh, and it also limits the number of primary layers. Uh, so we want to consider that. But we have established the zigzag pattern as the optimum primary fault stuff. Okay, the number of secondary uh, faults keep the rest of the parameters constant, and we get these results. A greater height for a greater number of secondary layers. Uh, however, we have a problem. We can't keep M2 and L2 independent and a constant area. So what we do is to keep a constant area, we vary the parameters like this, we vary N2, and then L2 is dependent on N2. So here are the, the results. We see a greater height for nine number of secondary layers. Uh, they are optimal parameters we, we establish. Uh, <coughs> okay, the number of primary layers. We vary the number of primary layers, keep the rest of the constant, and we get a greater height for a greater number of primary layers. But how is this dependent? Is it a power law? Well, we look at beam theory again. If it's a tired slip relationship, the second more, the area is proportional to the number of primary layers, and therefore proportional to the bend energy in the spring. And similarly, if it's a non-slip relationship, the second moment area is a cubic relationship with the number of primary <coughs> layers. And here we have plot log the number of primary layers to the uh, spring energy, and we can see a slope about 1.4. Well, this means it's not entirely is fully slipping when the uh, energy in the spring is proportional to the number of primary layers to the power of 1.4. Uh, this is uh, dimension as the number of primary layers, therefore we can have a non-rational uh, power. Uh, <clears throat> so now we have the same problem as with N2 variation. We can't keep uh, the, area, the, constant, uh, the area of the paper constant and, and one and one independent. Okay. So here we uh, have these parameters, and we vary M1, and M1 is dependent on M1. Now, okay, here are the results. We see a greater height for a greater number of primary layers, and we can see that the height uh, kind of dies out here. Uh, so we uh, established that 16 number of primary layers is uh, optimum, and this is the length that then becomes uh, uh, for a constant area of the paper. So now uh, we have here our optimal parameters. We have a greatest measured height here of 1.44 meters, and we have an estimated greatest height of 1.65 meters. Uh, so <coughs> what, we go back to interpretation again. Well, because the sign and developing on the launcher, find pattern dependence of the performance, and optimize the coordinate towards the maximum achievable height. What have I done? Well, we designed and built a ping-pong wheel launcher. We found a pattern dependence of the performance of different designs, and, and we optimize <coughs> towards maximum achievable height. So now I will hope for a, a valuable discussion with the opponent, and I would thank you all for listening. Let me make the, put the position to this uh, to the solution. Um, and uh, I want just to make some highlights on the presentation just shown. Uh, we have seen at theoretical studies of the, of the motion of the ball and, and on the uh, elastic, elastic plastic behavior of, um, of the of possible origami structure. And there, is also, there was also a, a computation of the energy stored in, in the possible structure. <coughs> there, there were also uh, some, some consideration about possible about possible way to call the structure and how they, they can uh, be related 
to the not to data achieved, and then there was shown the choice of important parameters in the study of the origami structure. There was also an, an experimental study of the various dependencies and an optimization of, of such a structure in order to achieve the very question of the problem. Uh, the pros of, of the solution, in my opinion, uh, are First of all, a very good theoretical analysis, very complete, uh, and also the consideration of the drug, which which was not basic, and some can neglect in their model. Uh, there are there were a lot of measurements, which which gives a lot of scientific validity to the to the solution, and and there was also a, a very nice optimization of such a um, such an ensemble of possible structure. But uh, but there are also some weak points about the fact that only few shapes were tested. Uh, in spite of the fact that they were just more way of folding the structure. And also the presentation, we think it was a bit too fast and there are many details that were not that clear uh, in the presentation. Uh, for example, uh, some things about the experimental setup, how the ball launch was performed, uh, that, are, that we think are important in uh, presenting a solution of such a problem. And also, we don't think you, you, you were clear about how did you choose uh, uh, an um, that kind of ensemble of possible ergonomic structure. Uh, because I mean, uh, the possible structure, the possible ergonomic structure uh, that can be made by an A4 sheet of paper are possibly infinite. And uh, you just taken uh, a closed ensemble of, of such a, of such structure, choose cho um, choose um, some parameters that can be varied in this special kind of structure, and then uh, obtain some results, and then optimize in order to obtain the maximum height achievable. But it wasn't clear why you decided to study such structures. So uh, we think that uh, there are some 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 topics that can be discussed in order to improve such such a solution, which it was almost almost perfect. We think that uh, it's a very nice starting point uh, for solving such a problem. But uh, uh, I'd, lo I'd also like to discuss uh, which are the limitation. In, in study, uh, in your kind of study of this origami, uh, I want to, I'd like also to know uh, how did you choose the parameters of your structure to to be to be varied, and uh, also if there can can there be other important parameters, and also uh, the human factor we think is really important in, in the ball launching. You weren't that clear in explaining uh, the ball launching, so so we think that. Uh, by seeing in some pictures human human hands, uh, we need to go deeper into this into this topic into this issue. Uh, and um, there was no mention about uh, uh, the energy that can be stored in both panel building and crisp holding. Are those energy stored in the equal way, uh, which has more loss, which which can be considered more of a friction? Do, do can can there be issues to consider in into these two behaviors because the general origami elastic theory in the literature that consider these two uh, energy store in a very, very difficult, different way. And also, why uh, did you not consider an axial symmetric structure which can make a, a ping pong ball stand better and also uh, don't create problems in, um, in, the, in giving a vertical energy to the ball? Can we repeat this first one? Yeah, yeah I, I'd like to study with the first one. Well, well okay, so, so the, the problem here is, as we saw, the smooth hole was much better. And the problem is, I'll take a paper. If we have a piece of paper and want to make smooth holes, uh, if the first, if we have a smooth hole in one direction, we can't have a smooth hole in the other direction. Uh, this is a limitation of flat fold, and we don't want these flat folds. So the only way to have a, a, an origami structure such that we have as many smooth folds as possible, we have to have um, in a, one, a linear direction. And we chose this one as the longest part of the paper. 
uh, I think this is a good point, but, but I also think that if you take a piece of paper and fold it before making an origami structure, so you limit your study not to an A4 paper, but to an A5 or A6 paper, but starting from an A4 paper, you can obtain a much higher uh, elastic constant in an approximation of single springs, uh, uh, and so you can make these this orthogonal foldings uh, and, and also gain energy stored in your structure. So uh, this, is, this is my objection to, to what have you said. Can you repeat that? And in well, if you, if you take the piece of paper before building the actual, the actual structure and you make some initial foldings yes. in the structure, you can, you can make a study not on an A4 sheet of paper, oh, yes. but on an A5 or A6, and it can store more energy. Yes, you, but you can't exploit this, these foldings, but, but that's not important, because you start from an A5 or A6, and I think it can be a good point to study. Why did you not consider this? Well, for example? It, it, well the problem was starting on A4 paper. So I don't yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you start from an A4 paper, you make some initial foldings, and then you can study an, uh, an A5 or A6 with well, one well, energy storing. Yes, let's take this as an example. Well, these folds that I made here, uh, they're entirely plastic, and therefore they will, they will limit a lot of the energy we can get from a paper. Uh, Why? Victor, could you speak up a little bit, please? <coughs> I'm a bit uh, hoarse from the last paper. Um, so, when we have these plastic folds, we will lose energy that we can possibly get from the A4 paper. Uh, okay. At least theoretically. Uh, I haven't studied just this example with a twice fold of A4 paper. Okay, that's nice. <coughs> so, uh, so, can we go to the, to the second question? I, I'd really like to know how you choose the parameters of the structure. Well, as you saw. Uh, and, and especially if there can be other important parameters. Well, uh, the, the parameters you chose was the folding styles and how many folds we made in, in mm -hmm. general. Uh, and then the length came in and uh, made it a six dimensional uh, parameter problem. Uh, so, other parameters, what do you mean? Like, we consider if we could uh, wet the paper, then the friction constant in the paper. Uh, it would probably be larger than the slip ratio, which is what was about 1.5 in the experiment. So if we wet it, then it's probably more like no slipping, which it would give us a, a higher exponent. However, we changed the, the material then. It's no longer we would consider 80 grams per square meter paper. Yeah, 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 that was fixed. Yes, yeah, because if we wet it, then it would change uh, the material uh, constant of the paper. Yeah, okay. So uh, then, how much do you think is important, uh, the demand factor, in your setup of people? Well, it's very important, but that's why we have this uh, probability distribution we check. So we use this, uh, I don't know, can we have our slide number, let's see. So you saw that we said that it was an expo uh, exponential distribution. Okay. Uh, so what we did was we, we made a discrete uh, cumulative distribution function of our experiment and we fit an exponential distribution uh, cumulative uh, probability function. Uh, uh, so here we can see uh, this is an incredibly good fit, I would say, because this is uh, a stochastic process. Uh, a lot of it because it's a large uh, difference, and because we have a good fit, we're, we're quite confident to say that it is an exponential distribution. And therefore, we, we made this, if you next one, okay. we could make this estimation with the maximum axis with a much higher constant. What I wonder, uh, can there be the possibility that by, by using the rents, you, give, you can give in some way more energy to the ball in the ball? So, hello everyone, uh, my name is Lucia from the team Germany and I'd like to review the problem for origami structure for you. So, uh, here a quick look um, again on the task. So, the task was uh, to launch, vertically launch a ping pong ball um, by using different paper constructions. It was indicated that one could use a Miura Ori and then uh, maximize the height uh, one could reach with that and optimize the parameters. Um, so, um, I'd like to summarize uh, some points on the report. First, um, I really liked your report. Um, you had um, a theoretical and an experimental uh, setup, and you 
you, on the one hand, you found a model for um, for the bending of the paper. On the other hand, um, you had um, you calculated the trajectory of the ball in the air. Um, yes, you showed us some pictures. Um, you had physical explanation for that. Um, on the other hand, I think it was all in all a little bit fast, um, so it was hard to follow at some points. And uh, sometimes the uh, due to that, I think due to that it was so fast, the connection of different parts of the theory was missing a little bit. Um, then maybe also uh, you did not, you only, you said you only launched it by hand, so you did not take into account the human factor. Um, this leads me uh, to the opponent's speech. So I think um, this is a very valid point your opponent uh, mentioned here, and I hope we can discuss it later. Um, that uh, how how did you actually launch the ball? Um, the importance of the human factor here. Then the opponent also um, criticized um, the lack of energy loss that was not taken into consideration. And um, yeah, he also stressed a little bit on the folding patterns in detail. So which patterns you used, and um, maybe that you did not use me or Ori because you ruled it out. Um, but you, I think you also missed some points on the experimental uh, setup that um, could have been clarified. So um, to the discussion you just had, um, first you discussed about uh, modeling smooth folds. Um, why is it so important to use smooth folds instead of uh, strong decreased folds? Um, then you discussed about what would happen if you made the paper smaller. Um, if you used up paper or folded it and then started your origami fold. And then you discussed what other one, what other parameters one could have, uh, could have used, uh, for example, paper signals. Um, so now I'd like to come to some points of discussion. Um, first of all, um, a very important point in my view is uh, Jimmy or Obi. Is, is it really true that one should rule out it completely? Or maybe we can discuss that in... Um, yeah, any, and Special second point, maybe, the, maybe we can start with that. How could you improve the experimental <coughs> setup for the launching? And uh, maybe uh, so the reporter can... The, uh, the experimental yeah. setup, not the neuroid. The first the experimental setup. Yes, the setup. experimental setup. <coughs> the so, launching and... So yeah. you said we didn't consider human type, and that's what we did with our experimental, uh, with, that with experimental distribution at the time. So we could estimate how this human factor played in, and estimate the greatest height of that. Um, and well, it would help to have uh, another set of, so how we launch that, so we can launch it consistently straight up in the same manner, which would lower our uh, width of this uh, confidence interval, because probably the height would be more uh, the same. Okay, um, do you agree on that one? So do you think that he took the human factor in account? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he wasn't that clear during the presentation. But but then when I asked him during our discussion uh, the importance of the human factor, he clarified all the points showing the distribution that probably in, 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 the, in the velocity of the presentation wasn't wasn't that clear. But, but then he clarified, and, and, now, and now I think I agree with this method. We, we did try to to launch the one, the ball straight up, or the friction from the rails was too great, so it it wasn't work, working. Uh, um, as a trick. So how long were they? It was uh, about this. We tried first um, 3D printed rails, just the uh, one on the sides, and then spin between them. <coughs> then we tried uh, three uh, acrylic laser cut sheets, and then the ball. None of them was. Uh, <coughs> It was just to so uh, you, to and you say that you already considered trying different heights so that maybe you can just guide the jumping at the beginning. Yeah, but then that's the friction at the beginning was too great. Okay, so because there wasn't high, even the friction, you say that even the friction at the beginning was already too high. So, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. But, but do you have any additional comments on that or do you like Yeah, my, my opinion uh, about my Euro Ori. Uh, okay, so you'd like to on, yeah, we can do that, yeah. In this specific, in this specific problem is that uh, uh, it may give too many boundary conditions in, uh, in, in our trial to solve the problem, uh, which, which are not really important in actually shooting a ping pong ball, 
and uh, and also uh, it can create a lot of problem in trying to optimize a structure that that wasn't thought initially to launch people on board. Uh, and I think that that an approach uh, based on starting on a structure with, on a, on an assemble of possible structure uh, thought just to shoot a ping pong ball is for sure a better choice than starting by by a structure invented for other means. Well, well uh, if I can use the mirror, well, I, I don't think it's too many parameters in the mirror because you have about three parameters there. So it's it's even less than Sorry, three, right? three or about three? About three. So I don't. Uh, uh, so we have the angles uh, and then like the length of them. So I think yes. it's three. So uh, and then yeah. and the point is uh, we haven't made a quantitative study of this, but we have tried it, and it didn't even reach a quarter of the high so, level. But, um, so we didn't see us, we, the would problem you, was to optimize it. We didn't yeah, would you say uh, this is uh, due to the folding pattern itself, or due to experimental problems, so that you have, um, because Miura Ori has sometimes a very narrow baseline, and then it's really hard to place the ball at the right position, so there are experimental problems. I think it's due to the fact that you have to crease the paper strongly, so that's for more theoretical reasons. Maybe well, you can start, and then you can also comment on that. Okay. As I said in my presentation, it's a, bit, a bit fast. It's because of the sharpness of the faults. Okay. Uh, so you think it's for the theoretical reason, the sharpness of the faults? Yes. Yeah. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, that's also my opinion because because. Uh, because uh, um, a sharp, a sharp, a sharp way of fold, uh, it's it's, cle it's clearly easier to model and then to think uh, an optimization way. But but it also can store less elastic energy, and and we can see that from both uh, linear elasticity theory and both experiments that that he made. Um, but isn't actually um, the amount of paper? So um, the energy that is stored in the paper. Would you agree that it is proportional to the amount of uh, paper that is creased? So if we have more creases in total distributed over the paper, then we can store more energy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's uh, valid to say that if we have a Miura Ori, then we, there are in total more creases in the paper, and so we can store more energy. Mm -hmm. How would you comment on that? I, I don't know, because, uh, because if we model a uh, single creases, it, in a very, in a very simple approximation, yep. a single spring, so, uh, they don't always combine in, in actually uh, uh, summing the their single elastic constant. It depends on the, on the configuration of such um, of such squeezes because 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 you can also combine them like spring in series and then decrease so the global elastic constant. You think, and it's, and you think it's hard to go storage. from the single crease to the to the whole structure? Yeah, yeah, but uh, you uh, but you have um, to see, but you have you to see how. Can you make this short because we have some questions? Okay, here. could I also answer your question that you have? Very short. Okay, so so it's not the problem of storing energy because that's simply integrating the critical curvature of the whole paper. But you have to transfer this energy to the ball because yes, that, that's so okay, this is this is, is an this is an experimental point, um, and you say that's easier for the. Uh, for this kind of patterns. Well, take this board, I can okay. store a lot of elastic energy in it, and take the ball and I re release it. Uh, sadly, we can't see the ball launch because it's, it's about how we can okay. take this elastic energy and transfer it to the ball. It worked for all our uh, sprints, but okay. not uh, all the uh, Yeah, okay, so thank you. Um, I think we have some questions from the audience. Question to the reporter um, How did you take the Smoothness of the creases and um, it's theoretical into account. What do you mean? No, there are some, you, you mentioned also the smoothness, yeah. smoothness of the creases. So, how can you can uh, consider them uh, theoretically? One moment. So, we have, yeah, it's going to come up, but we have, okay, let's say uh, we have the, the okay, if we have all the elastic models for beam theory. Uh, oh, you, you mean after a launch, or do you mean... Uh, um, there are so different kinds of smoothness, in my opinion, so... Okay, so, so here we have, uh, after the launch, how the uh, spring looks. So then we look at the path, and then we come to the curvature, yeah. the curvature here. So here we can find uh, the relaxed after the launch, and then the compressed, and then we found, find the difference between these curvatures is the... the curvature that we can use to get energy. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. 
Does that answer your mm -hmm. question? Yeah. Okay. Because we can integrate those. Uh, then maybe we can do one. Yes, um, you, you just proposed some different kinds of uh, patterns you use, but you also change your experimental setup. So, like a method, you uh, measure the height because I think you also have a movement into the y direction, not only in the just in the height. Well, the, the so problem was to measure the, the height. Yes, but are there any disturbance like this or energy any energy loss, for example, because they also move? Well, well that's because we, we found the, the uh, exponential distribution. Then we can find all these small errors that come from the angle in the launch, a small rotation of speed because the spring uh, touched the so ball. Also so that's in the, the distribution, and then we can estimate the maximum height from this. So this is also your explanation why your theoretical and your practical height is different. Oh yes, uh, yes. Uh, rather that's yes, the, yes. that's the median of or uh, uh, can I express my opinion on this? Um, yes, yes, sure. If you want. I, also, I also think that uh, the difference between is experimental light and is theoretical light is due, due to the fact that uh, are not always considered phenomena of friction uh, in the structure, which which are not that important because 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 you try to decrease them uh, in. Um, in, cho in choosing the structure, but uh, but they're still there. Someone can 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 neglect them in order to obtain a, a a a very accurate value. Okay, so thank you for the last comment. I think. Uh, so the estimated rate is high. Yes, I, I to agree with Germany that time is up. Right. So uh, I would like to thank uh, Germany and uh, Greece for an interesting Italy. Italy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, for uh, an interesting discussion. Uh, however, uh, it, uh, Germany perhaps went into a convoluted and dropped problems about the new Rory. Uh, however, uh, I will uh, consider at least uh, that there is probably a better launch method, but it wouldn't contribute much, and it, we haven't found anything that can do it without losing any sort of friction or similar. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you all for listening. And it was an interesting discussion. Uh, yeah, it's the time again. Time for questions from the jury members. And we have. Uh, ah, okay, uh, okay, okay. I, I, ask, uh, I want to ask uh, the reporter. Uh, uh, how many times do you use one uh, your mirror ore? We use each spring. Uh, oh, you mean your ore? Each uh, each your uh, uh, setup. Or spring or or gun. Well, we how use many each times? One you, ten you times. Use, huh? uh, ten times. Ten times. Because uh, we're okay. We don't I see. To uh, and uh, did you consider the fatigue of uh, material of your material the of paper? Fatigue of material. It's uh, after during, after this. Uh, after the wear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's in here. Uh, we can see a uh, thirty percent we are about uh, here in the so that's why we didn't use it more than ten times. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, please. Uh, the problem specifically wanted to uh, launch the ball vertically. How did you control for that experimentally, and what degree of verti verticality uh, do you achieve with your design? Well, uh, uh, let's see. We we launched it and we can't be sure that it's no uh, motion in the not vertical direction. However, we can estimate uh, because of this uh, distribution we found that uh, where if all everything went right, about where would the maximum height be for that spring? Uh, just as answer your question. Uh, so so, so we can, if, we can't I, control if I ask you uh, if vertical means uh, uh, sideways less, 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 than, less than five degrees, how often that happens? Can I? Because I, I treated the data. So we mark the x and y coordinate for the vectors here. We, did, we don't have that data taken out, but we do have the angle. But we only consider the vertical component. Only vertical. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, did I understand correctly that uh, your uh, elastic bending theory predicted the height of uh, some two centimeters higher than in your No, that that was the. Uh, so we have we have the measurements like 
is about dots, 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 dots. We have the maximum measured height, and then we have our community distribution function, and then we can solve some exp exponential. Uh, then we find that the mean is one third up. Uh, no, I mean in uh, your so theory, so we, the the theory, theory, did you uh, oh, consider you the bending to be elastic? Uh, yes, you use young we, modulus. Yes, because if we, we consider that because we looked at after it's been launched, and we can see uh, the, the change in curvature between compressed and after it's been compressed. So uh, we consider it to be ideal elastic plastic. That was the model. Okay, thank you. The next question from... Okay, so you cited the way, right? The mirror pattern. So what correlation has with uh, your, your, the one that you did, the experiment you use it? What correlation it has? Because mirror, as you know, is a metamaterial. So what's the main difference that happened there? The, the, the main difference, I would say, in, in this problem is uh, the pl plasticity of the faults. Um, however, we could look at the negative Poisson ratio or something. Uh, and the fact that the paper expands at its launch means it's more energy to the sides. But, but that's just a negative point for Neurori. And it's probably the, the plasticity in the faults that's uh, relevant mostly. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question from Daniel. Could you underline for me, you had this, this theoretical part about the, the bending and the energy stored in, in the spring, the organi, whatever. And then you had the experimental results. Yes. Could you underline for me which connection? You made yeah, between theory and experiments. Uh, this is a sense, right? what? This is yeah. what? This, to relate, this is the spring energy, and we measure the height. So we needed this theory to find uh, the spring energy and to, to see the exponent in this expression to find how the parameter uh, that was the number of primary layers affected the height. Okay. Um, All right, yes, please. We show the slide with the formula of energy, kinetic energy, uh, with the value four in this formula. In this, no, not 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 this. No. Previous. Previous. Where? What? This. Uh, the reporter, reviewer, and proponent uh, don't uh, mention on the uh, number four. Why in your formula is Number four. So why? We have it now. Please explain. You, you, and you. You are agree with it. Yes. Well, uh, I probably would have asked that question if there was more time, but but it out that uh, uh, in the means of the statement of the problem, uh, there were more important questions to discuss before. Okay. You don't know why four. Yeah? I don't know why. Yeah. You. No? Yeah, me neither. No. Um, and I you explain this when you are out of the formula, please. Um, but I think it was, um, I think there were more important points to discuss uh, when we were setting up and uh, also about yes, the view of the One second. Okay. So, um, we, we, really, we can see the initial kinetic energies. Uh, so, so the four comes from uh, this two. Uh, so as we see that, that that's it. Uh, and then we have half the board. So that, uh, we have two masses. Mass of boy and mass of spring. Yes, because... What should be the, form, uh, the number in, in this formula, right number? Well, what well, right number should be here? We have the four here because we have a half there. And then when we... Uh, square, you square the velocity and energy. What is the uh, basic idea? How you obtain four? Well, yeah. Okay, so the velocities are related by a factor of two, as seen over here, and the energy is a quadratic function of velocity. Therefore, we square the factor two and it becomes a factor of four. Okay, thank you for the Different answer. parts of the spring has uh, different we, we got the answer, answer, please. That's why. We see yeah, the I understand, but the number should be three, not four. Uh, we will discuss it later, please. Uh, and now we're out of time for questions. And we are in time for putting our part. Yes. Three. We'll have to Fine. discuss later. <laughs>
ready? Uh, let's do it. Uh, let's do it for the reporter. It's six, seven, nine, eight, eight, nine. Thank you. Uh, next goes the opponent. We'll have six, five, five, six, six, eight. All right. And the reviewer. Six, five, five, seven, six, seven. Thank you. What about fours? <laughs> All right. Uh, please comment. I uh, would like to start. Uh, for um, first of all, to the reporter, I think uh, that's uh, that's a great uh, 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 representation and great report. I uh, would like to thank you because uh, uh, most of the important parameters was investigated, and uh, you uh, has uh, really a nice uh, uh, presenting uh, uh, your. Uh, uh, your speech and um, I uh, really don't understand uh, why uh, opponent or why uh, there I <coughs> yes yes why uh, the reviewers <coughs> that uh, presentation was really quick it's this this is so much uh, parameters uh, which we have to investigate uh, and uh, he have to uh, uh, tell us well, so um, why, why is why is quick he uh, he can't uh, stand and uh, say one word in a minute uh, it's uh, really really um, uh, I I don't understand this uh, statement uh, quick presentation I I okay. don't uh, it's, uh, yeah all right I don't think so yeah um, I would I would give the computer a complimentary comment because right. this time I agree with Christoph, so I have to find someone to agree with. Uh, <laughs> what? Never I guess I'm against. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would agree that that's probably the main criticism I would raise. Um, Sixty slides in ten minutes means ten seconds per slide, and that's that's a high rate. And I think when you have many results and you have short amount of time, you need to decide which result you present. Yeah. You did because you have so much additional slides. Yeah. But maybe you could have even focused a little bit more uh, on some parameters where you thought the physics was most insightful. This would have given easy leads for the ensuing discussion, for instance. Um, the low grades that I gave for the uh, opposition and review was mainly because there is already so much material here and so much that had not been addressed in the discussion. There was no need to bring anything more as additional idea, additional perspective. Start with what you have here. There are already many points that have, that have not been discussed before trying to bring even more things on top of it. This was this would be my criticism. Thank you. Oh, so very generally, I'm against presentations that are have more slides than I have years. But uh, this time, I have to say that the material was really beautifully organized. Mm -hmm. So even mm -hmm. even with this high speed, at least uh, you, you highlighted the important things. Mm -hmm. And I think that to the extent that you didn't solve the problem of vertical launch, the presentation was ideal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Please add me. I can't do the white board. <laughs> <laughs> Elastic energy. And this energy is distributed to the kinetic energy of wall and the spring. Kinetic energy of wall, final velocity of wall, square over 2, uh, mass of wall, plus integral. Final energy, the uh, top end has the same velocity, upper end or zero velocity. Yes? Mm -hmm. so you, you have, yes? Yes. Yeah? Integral from zero to L, uh, V O over L times square times X square times the X times rho. Rho is the, uh, and that's why you obtain one third here, the integral of X square times dx, one third. Do we have more comments? <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, we 
Well, um, as for the report, uh, I would say that the area which we tried to implement was really uh, inappropriate in this case. So uh, I think we cannot even estimate the uh, uh, height uh, with such um, theory. Unfortunately, the whole idea of this problem was uh, to uh, find out how the non elasticity and this uh, non trivial uh, structure of uh, paper can result in this uh, variation of the height. Because otherwise, if you just uh, re um, restrict yourself to the simple uh, stretching and folding of the paper, then you, would, you can just make a little ball of paper and it can uh, result in a much uh, higher uh, height of the, of the lodge. So uh, it is not the, the idea. You didn't make use of uh, properties of mirror oil. Well, maybe that was just an example of mirror oil. Uh, and what's that? Mirror oil is you, you tried all these exact uh, structures, so, so it's like. Yeah. So we can discuss it. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for participating in this fight.